Protests have erupted across the Middle East after Saudi Arabia executed prominent Shia religious leader Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr, along with 46 others Saturday, in the country's largest mass execution in decades. The Saudi government accused Nimr of calling for the overthrow of the Saudi royal family. He'd been arrested multiple times, including in 2012, after he was involved in protests after the Arab Spring uprising. Sheikh Nimr had also called for the secession of Saudi Arabia's oil-rich eastern province, where the majority of the Sunni kingdom's Shia population live. After his execution Saturday, protesters in the Iranian capital, Tehran, responded by torching part of the Saudi embassy. On Sunday, Saudi Arabia responded by severing ties with Iran. This is Saudi Foreign Minister Adel al-Jubair. The kingdom, in light of these realities, announces the cutting of diplomatic relations with Iran and requests the departure of delegates of diplomatic missions of the embassy and consulate and offices related to it within 48 hours. The ambassador has been summoned to notify them. We are determined uh, not to allow Iran to undermine our security. We are determined not to let Iran uh, mobilize or, or create or establish uh, terrorist cells in our country or in the countries of our allies. Saudi Arabia has recalled its diplomats from Tehran and given Iranian diplomats 48 hours to leave Saudi Arabia. This is Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Killing a knowledgeable man who promoted virtue and prevented vice and had religious zeal is certainly a crime, a great crime. It is also a mistake because the spilled blood will undoubtedly bring divine retribution. Saudi politicians, rulers and policy makers should have no doubt that there will be divine vengeance for this blood. God Almighty will not pardon those who spill the blood of the innocent. Saudi Arabia's execution of Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr also led to protests in Iraq, Bahrain and several other countries. Bahrain says it, too, is severing diplomatic ties with Iran. Earlier today, two Sunni mosques about 50 miles south of the Iraqi capital Baghdad were rocked by bomb blasts, thought to be retaliation against al-Nimr's execution. Meanwhile, the U.S. has called for dialogue. Analysts are watching closely to see how this will impact regional tensions. Saudi Arabia and Iran back opposing groups in Syria and Iraq and are on opposite sides of of the conflict in Yemen. For more, we turn now to Ali Al Ahmed, the founder and director of the Institute for Gulf Affairs, one of Saudi Arabia's youngest political prisoners when he was detained at the age of 14. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Ali Al Ahmed. Can you talk about the significance of, first, what took place on Saturday, uh, one of the largest mass executions in Saudi history, um, and the significance of Nimr al Nimr, the sheikh? <clears throat> yes, good morning, Amy. It's a pleasure. Uh, the uh, execution of Sheikh Nimr and Nimr is uh, really uh, an important uh, development, given the fact this is the uh, first time in Saudi history where a, a Shia religious leader uh, has been executed. It's uh, 50 years ago or so, uh, another uh, uh, leader was sentenced to death, but uh, he was not executed because he was abroad. Uh, uh, this really uh, creates a, a division within the country. Uh, uh, in, in the Shia communities around the world, uh, religious leaders are most revered because they are the leaders of the community, and they are usually chosen by people choose them as their leaders. It's, uh, it's almost a democratic process. So, to, for the Saudi government to recklessly execute him and others, uh, including protesters, uh, really is, is a reckless act uh, that will have uh, repercussions for a long time. I think this will uh, uh, start uh, another uh, chapter in, in the Saudi history, a chapter that I think we will see uh, come to reality in 2016, uh, and it will not end well for the Saudi monarchy. I think we've seen that in, in different areas where uh, governments who targeted Shia religious leaders end up really with a mess in their hand, from Saddam Hussein to uh, Qaddafi to others who, who uh, probably uh, underestimated uh, the, uh, the will and the determination of the Shia communities uh, to uh, uh, 
bring uh, repercussions to, to, to them. And I believe the Saudi uh, monarchy committed a huge mistake that is not going to work for them uh, in the short and the long term. You went to a memorial service for the victims of the mass execution. Can you tell us who Nimr al Nimr though, is, exactly what he represents, uh, how he expressed his opposition to the Saudi regime? You're absolutely right. Sheikh Nimr al Nimr uh, uh, name, you know, a month uh, or two months ago, nobody knew who Sheikh Nimr al Nimr was. He was a, a, a cleric, a religious leader from a small town in, in the eastern shore of Arabia. But since his execution, memorial services has been held for him across the United States, across Europe and different parts of the world. Uh, uh, the Sheikh Nimr is a friend of mine. He was a friend of mine. I knew him uh, probably 30 years ago. I met him. I met his family, his father. I visited their home. Uh, his brothers, younger brothers, uh, are friends. Uh, so I knew him. He, uh, Sheikh Nimr, his uh, experience with the Saudi government dates back to his grandfather. His grandfather was also a fiery uh, a cleric who stood in the face of the Saudi oppression of the Shia minority uh, 50, 60 years ago. So he inherited this uh, zeal and, and resolve to, uh, 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 to object to this oppression. If you look at his speeches, he expresses this uh, strong determination and will. His words really are amazing words. And I, I, we will be translating a uh, selection of his words to, to show you that when he speaks really as a free man, he said, we either live free on this land or we die. In, inside of the of the earth, so or he says that we choose not to be ruled by the Al Saud, we choose to be free. These words of freedom and dignity, and you mentioned the secession. He didn't call for secession. He said that our dignity is more important than the geographical borders of Saudi Arabia. Our dignity comes supreme, and I think that's that's correct. The dignity of man. The dignity of a human being is much more important than political uh, unions. And uh, uh, his words really uh, shows you he's a rare individual. In, in, in When Mr. Obama spoke about the, the need for Muslims to combat uh, uh, violence uh, and uh, extremism, Sheikh Nimr uh, is a rare example of a person who calls for the people's rule in a, in a monarchy that does not allow the individual, Shia or Sunni, to have a say. He called for people's power. And that really shows you an example, a shining example of a, a religious, a Muslim religious leader who is empowering people and their choices, who defended everyone, not only his community, but also he spoke of the Sunni oppressed. Uh, and he, he really uh, would create a new model. He said that we should not support Sunnis versus Shia or Shia versus Sunni. We should support the oppressed against the oppressor, no matter their religion, their sect, and their uh, uh, ethnicity. So I, I really think his words is going to live, and it will create this new wave. He was in the country of Saudi Arabia, which is divided around sectarian lines. He was admired by many Sunni young men for his words, for his courage inside a country, a kingdom of silence. His words really uh, rang strong. And I think if you compare him to many people that we admire around the world, including the United States, you will see him really standing in the middle, in the, in the lion's den, and speaking without fear. Uh he was courageous, and we, he Al will be remembered uh, for a long time. Ali Al Ahmed, his nephew remains on death row or threatened with execution, who was, uh, what, 17 when he went out to a protest, Ali Muhammad Al Nimr, and also the Palestinian poet Ashraf Fayyad. What will happen with them? They were not part of the 47, is that right? Who were executed? Yes. Yes, uh, the Saudi government now is uh, trying to make this, uh, uh, these executions, although the majority of the executed people are Sunnis. Uh, uh, they are trying to make this, frame this into uh, Sunni Shia attention. It's not. It is really an attempt by the Saudi monarchy to silence their opposition and to label anybody who spoke against them as terrorists. And there is uh, a plan to uh, uh, execute more people. Uh, uh, the Saudis spread their executions across the, the, the country to really to spread terrorism, terror in the heart of the, of the population. 
the Saudi monarchy fear is that the population will rise against them. And the, the, the best way they think that they can silence this opposition and the aspiration of the young people in that country for people's power is to execute people and to uh, uh, publicly, by the way, and behead them so the people will not rise. Uh, Ali Al Ahmed, we're going to break and then come back, and we'll also be joined by Professor Toby Jones and arms expert Bill Hartung to talk about the U.S. relationship with their very close ally, Saudi Arabia. Stay with us.